Welcome back to Geospatial Analysis. In this tutorial, we'll demonstrate how to use Google Earth Engine to assess the relationship between vegetation health and rainfall patterns using MODI's NVI and CHIRP's precipitation data. We'll calculate the Standardized Precipitation Index, SPI, and compare it with NDVI to understand vegetation response to climatic variability. The main objective is to analyze how vegetation reacts to rainfall fluctuations. Visualize drought and what conditions using SPI. Generate a scatter plot showing the correlation between NDVI and SPI for a given area and period. Step 1. Load MODI's NDVI data. We're using Mod 13A2, which is a 16-day NDVI composite from the MODI's Terra sensor. Filtering for May 2024 provides insight into vegetation health during the late dry or early wet season depending on your region. We select the NDVI band and apply dot mean to average all images within the date range. The NDVI values are scaled between minus 2000 and 10,000. So we multiply by 0.0001 to convert them to the standard NDVI range, minus one to one. White heavy check mark this layer represents average vegetation greenness across the region in May 2024. Step 2. Load CHIRP's Precipitation Data CHIRP's Climate Hazards Group Infrared Precipitation with Station Data offers high-resolution daily rainfall data. We choose a four-month period from May to August 2023, often a wet season in many tropical regions. This provides a cumulative precipitation context leading up to the NDVI measurement period, May 2024, useful for delayed vegetation response analysis. The precipitation band is in millimeters slash day. Step 3. Calculate total rainfall in SPI. Total precipitation is computed by summing all CHIRPS images from May, August 2023. We calculate the mean and standard deviation of total precipitation across the area of interest AOI to standardize the data. This formula gives us the standardized precipitation index, SPI. SPI 0, wetter than average. SPI 0, drier than average. SPI minus 1.5, extreme drought. SPI is a commonly used drought index that simplifies rainfall anomalies into a standardized score. Step 4. Visualize SPI and NDVI. Map.center object zooms to your AOI. The SPI layer is color-coded from red, drought, to blue, wet. NDVI uses brown to green, representing poor to lush vegetation. This helps in visually correlating SPI patterns with NDVI values. For instance, areas with red SPI and low NDVI likely experienced drought-related vegetation stress. Step 5. Sample points for analysis. We overlay the NDVI and SPI layers and randomly sample 500 pixels across the AOI. Sampling helps reduce the data size while preserving the spatial variability for statistical analysis. Using a scale of 1000 meters helps ensure SPI and NDVI pixels align properly, especially when using data from different sources and resolutions. Step 6. Structure the table. This step renames the fields so we can easily create visualizations or export them later. It converts the raw feature collection into a clean table with SPI and NDVI columns. Step 7. Create and display scatter plot. 
This chart shows how rainfall anomalies relate to vegetation greenness. A positive correlation means rainfall promotes vegetation growth. The red trend line helps quickly interpret the strength and direction of the relationship crucial for drought monitoring, climate impact studies, and ecological forecasting. That wraps up this powerful analysis. You've seen how to retrieve and process NDVI and rainfall data, calculate SPI for drought analysis, correlate vegetation and climate data in one workflow. You can further enhance this by doing time series SPI and DVI correlations, applying zonal statistics by land cover, or exporting the data as CSV or shape file for machine learning. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hit the bell icon to get notified when we post more remote sensing and GE tutorials. Comment below if you'd like a follow-up tutorial on exporting results or using this data for classification or forecasting.